they probably ought to be 2019 rather than 2021. That was a carryover from the five year extension. That's what it's going to be. Your state of 2019 You're right, Mayor. Not, we missed that. So, so it really should read 2019 because from 2019 on, we're going to look at it every year, and the trigger only only accommodates a year at a time, so it's redundant, right? It should say 2019. <laughs> The two feet was was the city that was Red Ledge's wish. The city had one put in there, but we put two feet the way it was in the Red Ledge's suggestion. So, and uh, you know, Red Ledge can speak for themselves, but they did send a copy that's a version that's very close to this, except for the trigger part. Red Legend does not meet the, the requirements to get road finish numbers. You put it, so it constitutes a breach of the local agreements and this amendment. Red Legend put the breach that if this breach occurs, the city could choose to withhold any further phase approvals until a brief of construction is set by the past road and the next road shall be completed through the first. Something behind it is they didn't meet the agreement. That's right. The one change that's different than in the packet is uh, we, we added, I don't know, Mark, if that got in there, but up on, the, on item number one here at the top, or here at the top of, the top of this, it says beginning in 2019 and each year thereafter, during February or March, depending on the convenience of the council and whatnot, we'll look at it. So, just a few words there, but to make it clear, it's the beginning in 2019 and then every year thereafter that we'll take a look at it. And we hadn't said that, we just said thereafter. It means to say beginning in 2019 and each year thereafter. These are just little things like your 2019 instead of your 2021. There's really no change than what we tabled except for cleanup language. This is what you're reading. This, what was in the packet was the same thing we tabled with a few typo and, and understanding changes is all. The major thing is we softened the language on the trigger a little bit. Council have any other comments you'd like to make on this? I feel like we hear from Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Well, I think, isn't that what you asked for, Jeff? <laughs> let me get, let me get you. So what specific questions do you have? Yes, we, um, there's, there, there's a couple of different options and versions that are out there. Councilman Crittenden wanted what has been in the packet to be simply what he put on the table with a, a few clarifications that we tried to do. And so there's that option. There's, other, there's others that are out there that are being discussed that are not really before the council right now, but, but between the parties and so frequent the ledges. And we've had many, many meetings this last couple of weeks. But yes, the, the way I understand it in, in point on is that instead of the five-year um, extension, it, the, this proposal backs down to a three-year extension. And then thereafter, 2020, 2019, thereafter, every year there would be in this proposal a review where the council would be able to review with the ledges 
um, assess the needs, what the, what the town, what the city wants, what the engineer wants, those type of things. The exception to that is Bassett Ritchie. If Bassett Ritchie gets going before that, then within a year of when Bassett Ritchie begins, I think is what it was, Red Legends is to be done with their portion of the road. That's what's before the council right now. There have been many, many discussions. I'm confident that there are, I've been able, I'm confident that we've been able to identify, I think, the four things that Stone Creek is concerned about. The things, the, the one thing I think that BART is concerned about and what the city desires. I think we understand all four or six of those things. I feel confident that I understand. And I'm optimistic that, as I've talked with them, that I think all of those things can be addressed, particularly if you put them in a hierarchy, as I've talked to the three different parties. There seemed to be some optimistic compromise from almost all of the parties. You can continue to discuss, and, and I think all of you have, unless you have specific questions, everyone's here that can give some of the specific facts. But to kind of get a clear picture of where everybody wants to go and how do we get there. If we can't do it tonight, or we can't do it in, in this type of a meeting, I might suggest that we get representatives from Stone Creek, representatives from Red Ledges, from the city council, and from staff. Or if you just want the staff to work it out and bring it to you and come into a meeting and see if we can, having identified those things, decide what's most important to everybody, and then try to get an agreement. Those parties will know that the city council knows that we're getting a meeting together. And everybody at that meeting will know that these things will be reported to the city council. So any party that is being unreasonable in that mediation or negotiation will either have to explain why and be reasonable in it, or bear the brunt of the questions from the city council. And, and unless, and I'm, and I'm saying that's a plan B, maybe we can work this out and get it done, but if not, that is a good forum where all parties have to legitimately and genuinely come in knowing that the final review is going to be by the city council. Uh, additionally, uh, the uh, proposed agreement that we have here, do you feel like it's enforceable? problems uh, with the, uh, having the parties uh, perform as uh, described in that agreement? Not specifically, in, I don't have any legal concerns that glare out at me with regard to what is before the council. I think that what is before the council right now could be approved upon, and Ron and I have talked about that, these other options that we talked about. Ron, or, Councilman Crittenden got the ball rolling as I think in the council could everybody talking about it, and wanted to preserve the integrity of what was tabled, parliamentary, right? So now, but, he's, so he's, he's done that for you to see. Is this correct, Ron? Well, there are other things that have been discussed as we've had these meetings that I think could be added to it. Well, and what was put in the packet, uh, I believe, is what we added just the little things with some lines where what was and what is. If you look at the fact that it's beyond what was tabled, it's these other little typos in it. There's this one typo that, or one or two we'd come up with after that went out. But I thought that, but, yes, but the, the, elephant, from the, council. the elephant in the room that's the big difference between staff and red edges is the connectivity between the two subjects. It's not in what's tabled, it is not in what's sitting in your agenda. Okay? And that, that's an important clarification because I think that that is the key, or if not that key, the one difference. of the two keys, don't you think, Ron, that, that now moves that forward to a global settlement? It, it wasn't left out, um, it was left out intentionally because it wasn't part of the tabled, the tabled um, portion. But my point is, you're not bound to that table portion. That's just the conduit from which to pull it off the table and now go forward. And as Ron says, that the elephant in the room, there are other, we've discussed and we've drafted other things we haven't put on that, that, that address those 
aspects. There have been discussions with, uh, with all of the parties, and they're fully aware of what, where I think it would work. But that's... that's it isn't necessarily what staff would propose because of that connectivity issue. Uh, in deference to not getting in the middle of some legal issues, there's a letter from Stone Creek in your packet asking for consideration on another location. That also is part of what's being discussed in the legal terms. There's the it current... It doesn't necessarily have to be part of this agreement, right? No. That's just something that's been suggested. Right. And there's, there, there's, there, as those meetings have gone on, there has been proposed language, at least verbally talked about, and notes taken and things that are ready to be kind of put together as the parties say, yeah, this is my number one. Or, uh, right, that is what's your number one. Right? This is kind of the number one. Stone Creek, what are yours? Stone Creek has a couple. Bart, what's, what's the big thing that, that's shot at you? Well, it's this. And staff are the other things and then the city. All of those are kind of there and ready to be kind of put together and say, okay, well, how much are each of these value and where can we make an adjustment? Jeff, uh, earlier today we had a discussion. I'd like him to explain the legal part. There's several little pieces of it that uh, could affect the city, Jeff, if you don't mind. So, yeah, um, one of my, up until just the other day, I, I wasn't terribly concerned, but I think as a council, we need to we need to look at the ramifications of just saying here, build this road. We can deal with the details of it. Uh, one is the connectivity, of course, and, and I think that it's arguable whether there's there's some city code that says they develop the rest of stuff to the to the uh, property line. But the other concern for me is uh, making sure that the road curves at the top. From what I understand, and somebody can correct me. Is that the proper um, right of way isn't isn't there for that to be done, and Stone Creek would have to provide that. And so I, I see some details here that, granted, some of this can be arguably between two private um, entities that maybe the city doesn't need to be involved in. But the end result is the way that that road is built, and that road is going to serve the city and the citizens of the city. So I think that those details do involve the city. And so I think as a council, we have to make sure that we kind of cross the T's, dot the I's on those details before we make a solid decision on this. I would hate to make a decision, and then three years later, or four, or however long it takes, the road gets built, <clears throat> but there's a few items on that road that aren't necessarily um, the way that we had hoped or intended, and then that road stands as a monument of probably something that you know could have, should have, would have. I would hate to see the road end up in that situation. And so for me, before we make any kind of a decision, I think that those kind of details should be worked out. And that's, that's why I think that's the idea of maybe not taking it off the table tonight, asking those parties to get together, maybe like Mr. Smedley outlines and just two groups, but sit this on the, leave it on the table until we hear back that you worked out the curb and the access and the connectivity and the, and the retention basin. There's several issues and we don't want to get in the middle, but we see that as your issue. But, uh, Jeff pointed out from the earlier today, they certainly affect us. And, and we don't want a road that has a 90 degree angle because you couldn't get the curve from Stone Creek, and we don't want a road you build that, that doesn't tie in with you and Stone Creek, but they're all legal <coughs> issues that we don't want to get in the middle of. So maybe we just won't take it off the table tonight if that's our decision uh, and have some more discussion. But whatever, that's just some other things. Maybe if the council want to make a request for the promise. Two items that I've noticed here. 
recently, so I didn't have a chance to get back to anybody on this. But it talks about the execution of the two easements in, in exhibit, Exhibits A and C. Uh, it says that the easement shall be granted for the purpose of a roadway and land underground utilities. And as we had discussed previously, uh, Exhibit C is just a utility easement only. Uh, this goes back to that connection section between the uh, bypass road and Stone Creek's property line. So that would be one item that we need to match up one way or another. Because uh, the, the way it's worded in paragraph 2 and the way it's worded in Easement C, excuse me, Exhibit C, which is the easement, are, are different, they're contra contradictory. So we need to fix that up. Could, could you clarify though, Todd, as far as, I've never changed that at all. I've never touched that paragraph. So that must have come forward from the original 2007 interlocal agreement if it's not been changed. We didn't, I didn't propose to change it. No, it, it, it became incorrect when the red line and C was added to this document. I'm not saying you did. No, I, and I don't know who did that, but when that line was changed to NC, that became, that became a different situation. You're just saying, Todd, that exhibit C, exhibit C doesn't necessarily coincide with what Dan is trying to say. And you have to either have another exhibit or something that they describe. We, we have another exhibit already there, and it's a utility easement for the section between the bypass road and the Stone Creek property line. So we just need to. You could literally take out the rest of the sentence uh, below that says the easement shall be granted for the purpose of a roadway and land underground utilities, and then it would be correct. But I think, you know, okay. if you really need that language because the exhibits already explain what they are for. But do you have a sense? Do you have a sense of whether that was that way in the 2007 version? That that there was nothing in the 2007 version about that. Well, was it an added in the amendments then? Because again, the, I, I just took, I took every bit of this off of your version that was in the packet on February the 4th. Every bit of it, or I mean, yeah, February, January 21st. I took this right off of your, what you said to Mark. From that, I added some amendments. I, I think the NC was added by Mark and Mark, and that's where it, there became an, an issue between the two. I, I think that's a minor issue. We, okay. we could tweak some wording there, and, and it would work this way. I think the bigger issue on this, we probably spent too much time on that one, it's simple. But I think the bigger issue on this is we, we really feel we need a, a three year minimum on this type of a, of a, an extension. Uh, with the trigger, I, I understand the trigger and I understand the, the possibility of no road going through all the way to 550 East by Bassett Ritchie. Um, in that period of time, I, I understand that there is uh, probably a low probability of that happening, but there is, an, there is a, a possibility. And, and so from where we stand, we feel like we, we really need least a three-year time frame without that trigger. And so that would be my request on this version. Now, as Mark mentioned, there are other versions floating around out there, and we're open to some of the ideas within those other versions. One, one of the versions is to, to simplify this, uh, to do away with the trigger and just say, hey, let's just do a three-year extension, and we'll review it every year after that. That would make things extremely easy, uh, very straightforward. Uh, we would grant the easements that are, that are contemplated under this agreement, and, uh, and, and that would be, I think, simplest for all parties involved. Um, and, and that's something that I had sent, I think I'd sent that to you, Ron, as well as to Mark Smith and Mark Anderson. So that, that was a possibility that we'd be very interested in. It's, it's pretty much the same thing that's here, except for the trigger. Yeah, but that's really it. it. It just makes it extremely simple and easy. And except for the connection that the staff one. That's correct. Uh, um, just just like in, in your version, it did not have the, uh, the, the connectivity. connectivity. So that's so all, all 
also a possibility. And, and there are other uh, possibilities floating around out there that, that we also would be open to discussing as well. Um, when it comes to Councilman Smith's uh, comments, um, I, I think you're right. I think the uh, turn of the, the bypass road curve is very important. And I think that could be part of a future phase of Sun Creek. That could be required at the time that Sun Creek came on for their second and third phase and uh, that situation was. And that could be uh, contemplated under a subdivision agreement or whatever the case may be in, in that situation. Uh, the connectivity issue, I think, is also an important issue. I, I actually agree with the council's thoughts about the connectivity being important and, and staff's thoughts that, that that's an important item. And the more we've looked at it, we feel like that's extremely important. Uh, I, I would suggest again that uh, the same thing happen. When somebody comes into their second phase, would that be a requirement for their second phase? Just like uh, the bypass road was a requirement for red ledges when we came in. As I've talked about before, I believe that's the just and fair way of approaching these things. If Stone Creek weren't developing, um, then there would be no reason for that access easement at that, at that point. Um, where they will be developing and where they will be the beneficiary of that, and, and I did hear comments from, from uh, the group uh, last time around that there are others who would benefit from that, and I agree with that. I think the community as a whole in that area would also benefit and so that being the case, I believe that that should be a requirement on Stone Creek. Uh, Mark uh, Smedley mentioned a minute ago that there has been some meetings this week, including some emails back and forth between our ledges and Stone Creek. And I, I'm actually very uh, pleased at where those are going. Uh, we've been able to uh, kind of make a proposal, uh, I want to say it was a, a week ago or so, I can't remember the exact date. And we've had a couple of counters going back and forth. As of today, I feel like uh, those, things, those uh, negotiations are going in the right direction. And so we're very pleased with that. We think that a, uh, a resolution between Stone Creek and Red Ledges and all of the outstanding items between the two parties is something that could be worked out. Um, so I, I think the best decision that the council made in the past was to stay out of private businesses' business. And that has been a benefit to I think everyone. So that's that's our our take on where things are at from that perspective. Yes. Could, could you address the the Stone Creek proposal that's also on our agenda? Do you have an opportunity to read that? I did read through that. Could you address that? Because that seems to most immediately affect other citizens and the need for them to move forward. So I, I guess my only question would be, uh, what, well, let me back up because my name not everybody understands what's happening in that, in that uh, request. Uh, as as a part of the original documents with Red Legends, between Stone Creek and Red Legends, there was a section called the initial work section that was to be completed in 2008. Uh, since Stone Creek went away and wasn't functioning at that point in time, that was never uh, finished off or finalized. So at this point in time, my understanding from that document, and they can uh, speak to this better than I can, my understanding from that document,